the principal investigator in Academia Sinica, a great mentor to PhD students. They are doing cutting edge research and they are outstanding in their field. I was attracted to my current advisor, Dr. Yan Bingxue's research and uh, determined to pursue PhD and join TIGP family. I'm working in Institute of Molecular Biology and previously, before pandemic, our institute have a lot of seminars. Many top scientists like Paul Stumber, Oliver Hober were invited to our institute and give talks. These talks are very inspiring and uh, you can learn different aspects from various fields. You can adapt similar concepts to your study. And usually after a seminar, the students can have lunch and directly interact with them. You can ask them all kinds of questions like how is scientific like in US or how do they maintain work-life balance. They will kindly share their experience and tell us stories, give us advice. I remember Dr. Paul Stumber emphasized the importance of publication. He said publication is the currency in academics. You have to write down your work and publish to let people know. So I think attending seminars is very important in your scientific career. And not just in IMB, other institutes in Academia Sinica invite many scientists in the world. TIGP gives us a lot of resources to support PhD students. For example, the dormitory is super convenient and with a reasonable price. I have taken two TIGP academic English writing course. The first one is writing an essay. They teach us basic writing skill, like writing a paragraph and small essay. Another one is more advanced. It, they teach us how to write a manuscript. So we dissect the manuscript into different sections and we learn the common rule and structure in each section. TIGP also provides research performance fellowship and I am fortunate to receive twice of this fellowship. This award not only financially support me, but also motivate me to perform better in my research. Last thing I would like to mention is that it is very easy to collaborate with an expert in different fields in Academia Sinica. Our lab is not a chemistry background, so we collaborate with Dr. Xie Junjie in Institute of Chemistry in Academia Sinica. They help us to analyze the natural compounds in the fungi and uh, synthesize the compound. This really helps us to address many questions in our story. Moreover, our institute has many core facilities like image core, genomic core, bioinformatic core, and transgenic core. This core help us to do a lot of experiments. So, especially my project highly rely on uh, imaging. So the technician in our image core, Su Ping, really helps me to do all kinds of imaging. I always say that I cannot graduate if Su Ping is not in IMB. So TIGP and Academia Sinica really support us to do a good science and make our life easier so we can focus on our research. So there are two people who deeply inspire me. One is my boss, Yan Bing, and another one is the technician I have mentioned in IMB, Su Ping. So my boss shows me what a great scientist should look like. She is very good at communicating and collaborating with people. You can really feel her passion and it is contagious to me. I'm her first PhD student and she set a very high bar for me. She always pushed me to the higher ground and because of that, I become more independent and mature. She teaches me how to use genetic approach to address a question and be very careful to making any conclusion. Su Ping is the head of our image core in IMB. She is an expert in all kinds of imaging, including TEN and Confocal. I discussed with her which machine or method I should use before I start the experiment. She is very picky about the image. Sometimes she will ask me to try another machine and do another experiment to get a better result. So image technique keep evolving and Su Ping always learn the cutting edge method to help us to get the best quality of image. So I learned a lot from both of them. Both of them are my role model in life. So it is another good reason to join TIGP program. We have around half of the students are foreigners 
and I have two very close friends. They are from India and Malaysia. I even attended my Indian friend's wedding in India 2018. It was a wonderful trip. My wife and I uh, first traveled in Delhi, and then we go to Agra to visit Taj Mahal. And then we go to Jaipur, which is the hometown of my junior in MCV program. She asked her family to host us and took us to the local market and try all kinds of Indian food. And last, we fly to Kolkata to attend my friend's wedding. And my wife dressed their traditional salary to attend the wedding. It was a very unique experience. So our lab studied the interaction between predator and prey. In the lab, the predator is fungi and the prey is nematode. And my project focused on how does oyster martian kill nematodes. Nematodes are the most abundant animal in soil. And some of them eat bacteria and does not harm human and plants. We call them free living nematodes. But some of the nematodes are parasites like hookworm and the roundworm. They infect billions of people in the world. And previously, scientists found the fungal hyphae of oyster martian produce a tiny droplet-like structure, and once the nematode touch this structure, they will be paralyzed. However, the mechanism of this fast paralysis is unclear. So we use a free-living nematode, C. elegans, to study how does nematode respond to this fungal toxin. We found the toxin target nematode sensor cilia and induce massive calcium influx in muscle. This high concentration of calcium will cause muscle hypercontraction and paralysis. Moreover, we found the fungi can induce massive cell death in C. elegans. We think that is why this fungal toxin is so potent to nematode, and the nematode cannot escape from the fungal hyphae. This study not only can potentially apply to develop a novel drug to against parasitic nematode, but also establish a paradigm for studying cell death in C. elegans. And the Genetic Society of America hold the International C. elegans Conference, and I have attended three times. The conference in 2017 and 2019 were held in University of California, Los Angeles, USA. In 2017, I was the first year PhD student, and I have never attended an international meeting before. I was super excited, but I'm not very sure what I should do at the, the conference. I gave a poster and my boss invited all her friends in the elegance community to visit my poster and introduce me to them. It was very challenging, but I had a lot of fun. So in 2019, our story is more comprehensive and we were wrapping up the story into a manuscript. And I was very lucky to be selected to give an oral presentation. Because the talk is very short, only 10 minutes plus 2 minutes QA, the story has to be very concise and clear. I practiced a lot, but even then I was still very nervous. I remember the Nobel laureate Martin Trophy, who is the first person to express green fluorescence protein in C. elegans, was sitting in the first row to listen my talk. Fortunately, I didn't pass out and I gave a solid talk. Because I'm the last person to present in that section, people stay and ask me many questions. You can really feel people enjoy my talks and uh, they appreciate our work. I remember later when my boss and I working in the UCLA campus, a guy stopped us and told us he was in my talk and he really enjoyed it. It was very rewarding and motivated me to keep doing research. Attending this kind of big meeting, you have to prepare yourself. The conference has more than 2,000 participants, about 200 talks, and thousands of posters. You have to check uh, which talk you are most interested in and uh, which poster may relate to your work, and organize the time to go to the poster and the talks. The way I use is I will search the genes I'm interested in and uh, to see who is also working on these genes and directly go to their poster and discuss with them. So this year, the C. elegans conference used a virtual platform and I also gave a poster. The organizations help us to send an invitation to free scientists in the world to visit our poster. 
I have invited uh, Dr. David Jen, who is a professor in UK, and uh, he's an expert in the uh, organismal death in sea elegans. We talk more than one hour discussing our poster. We discuss the possibility of molecular mechanism, and I proposed several models trying to convince him our conclusions. He was very impressed with our study, and he said he never think our study can relate to his. Because I'm getting to the end of my PhD period, so I'm starting to think what am I going to do at my postdoc. So I think participating in this kind of big meeting really clear my head. I can explore different fields and trying to narrow down specific niche. So I know some people reach to the PI at the conference and uh, discuss the opportunity to work in their lab. So I think attending conference is really important in a PhD period. And TIGP has student conference traveling grants to support student traveling. So pursuing PhD is not easy. You have to put all your effort and attention on it. Sometimes you will struggle and like a lot of negative result and you don't know what to do. Try to ask for help and discuss with people. And always think an alternative model in your study. I remember when I proposed a proposal in my qualification exam, I only have one hypothesis. I thought the paralysis is due to abnormal neuronal activity. But turns out I was totally wrong. The neuronal activity is dispensable, and it is a cell death that causes a permanent paralysis in C. elegans. So think all kinds of models, as many as you can, and address them carefully. Last, I would like to quote a speech from Denzel Washington. He said, keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up A. Without commitment, you will never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you will never finish. I want to thank my mentor, Yan Bin, and all the support in N414, especially Samuel, who discussed a lot in my research. And I want to thank the staff in Institute of Molecular Biology, Jessica, Linda, Su Ping, Wen Li, and Su Yun. You guys really helped me. And uh, I want to thank my family, my brother and sister, who always support me and cheers me up. They listen a lot to my complaint. And last, I want to thank my wife, Ashley. Because I spent a lot of time in the lab and uh, even weekend, she always tolerates me. And she always believed me I can make it and succeed. And she continuously encouraged me and uh, support me. Thank you. Thank you.